Hi folks, we're here today with the Tormach Tapping Head. This tool has axial float and lets us tap in Tormachs that don't have the ability to rigid tap. So today we're gonna to be going over some of the tips and tricks that we've learned to make this reliably tap holes. Thanks for tuning in and welcome to another Wednesday Widget. We have the ER16 version of the Tormach Tapping Head. This tool holder holds the tap straight radially but allows for axial float. This soaks up any discrepancy between the actual programmed feed rate and the RPM that the spindle is turning. We're going to start out this part using a quarter inch spot drill. We're going to spin it at 5,000 RPM, feed it at 15 inches per minute, and we're gonna go down to a depth of 50 thousandths into the hole. We're just gonna use a normal drilling cycle and then immediately follow that up with a high speed steel number 7.201 diameter drill bit. So for that we're going to spin it at 5000 RPM again, plunge at 25 inches per minute, we're going to go all the way through, the tip's going to break through by 50 thousandths, and we're going to use deep drilling with full retract. So in this hole we're going about five times the diameter for our depth so we're definitely going to peck it to help get those chips out we're going to use a pecking depth of one eighth of an inch For this tapping head, we are going to start out by running it at this machine's slowest usable RPM, 525. So this is really important to note because if we put a smaller value in here, say 400, the program will still run in the machine. It's not going to alarm out, but your feed rate is going to be incorrect. And this is a floating tapping head to account for those differences, but it only has so much float. So definitely don't want to go below the slowest RPM that the machine will run. So for these holes, we go down a total of three quarters of an inch and we're just using a normal G84 tapping cycle. Let's see how this goes. The vertical movement of the tap isn't quite smooth, which we'll dive into, but we end up with a threaded hole. So we made it through the first 10 holes successfully. For this next hole, let's speed it up a little bit. We're going to run this at 750 RPM. When we tell Fusion 360 that we're using a tap, it automatically calculates the feed rate. So that is adjusted up as well and we don't have to worry about it. Okay, we ended up with a tapped hole. Nothing too dramatic to note. Let's speed it up even more. We're going to run at 1000 RPM and see how that goes. Ooh, 
Let's break this down and try to see what's actually happening. The tap looks good on its way into the hole, but we can see that the spindle reverses and the tap starts moving towards the holder significantly before the Z axis starts retracting. At this point, we ran out of travel and the tap bottomed out on the holder. The spindle kind of stalled there for a second, so why the pause? Let's pull up Tormox website here and see what we can find. CNC tapping guidelines. Seems like a good place to look. If we scroll down here to the tension and compression tapping heads, when talking about the G84 tapping cycle, it states a dwell time is automatically calculated when using. Automatic dwell can be overridden by a P word on the G84 line. What we're seeing at the bottom of the hole is a dwell in the Z axis. When we're running the tap slowly, that's not that big of a deal because the tap doesn't cover that much ground in that short amount of time. As we speed up, it increasingly becomes a larger problem. So let's try overriding the dwell with a P0 so that there is zero dwell and see how that affects our tapping cycle. In order to see how P0 really affects this tapping cycle, let's go ahead and do it at the same speed that just failed without a P0. So we'll go ahead, we'll select the next hole, and then once we post the program, we'll go ahead and manually add that P0 into the G84 line in order to eliminate that delay. Control S to save it, and we'll see how it does. That looked a whole lot better than it did without a P0, and the threads look a whole lot better too. So let's try to bump the speed up some and see how it does. So we'll go ahead and increase the RPM up to 1250. We'll select the next hole, and then we still need to remember to add that P0 in the G84 line. Well, that didn't look too bad, but did you notice that the tap still reached the top of the hole before the Z-axis was there to really be able to pull it out of the hole? When you check this hole with a thread gauge, you can feel that the first thread is a little tight. You can see that that tap spins against the top thread for a few revolutions before the Z-axis catches up to pull the tap back out of the hole. The top thread should not be any tighter than the rest of the threads, and if we go back and look at the first 10 threads that we tapped, we were seeing the same problem, where the tap reaches the top of the hole just barely before the z-axis is there to pull it away from the hole. That tap spins on the top thread a few times and ultimately reduces the quality of your threaded hole. P0 really helped at the higher RPMs. Let's see how it affects the tapped hole when we run it clear down at 525 RPM. So we can just come over here, we'll edit our geometry to tap the next hole. We'll change our RPM down to 525. And then we can't forget, once we post this program, we still need to go in and manually add a P0 to our G84 line. We can slow this down and see that that is a very smooth action coming out of the hole and when you check that tapped hole with a thread gauge, it feels much better. So when we compare that to the 525 tapping test for the first 10 holes, we can really see the difference that we've eliminated that jagged movement just as the tap comes out of the hole. But manually adding G-code every time you want to tap a hole is not a very sustainable process. So let's look into editing the post processor. I was just using the Tormach installed post processor, but let's open it up in Visual Studio Code. If you aren't using Visual Studio Code, card here to the video where John gives a great introduction to this software. I highly suggest checking it out. It's been a very useful tool. 
Anytime you're going to edit a post processor, start out by going ahead and saving a copy of it. That way, if things go wrong, you can always go back and use your original. So we can open this up here and get Visual Studio Code to create a generic program showing us a tapping cycle. Once that's pulled up, we can highlight the code and it will show us the part of the post processor that created it. So I started to highlight the G84 line. We can scroll down through here and see, okay, here we have a conditional statement. If P is greater than zero, then we're going to write block a P plus a variable. Well, we don't want it to just be if P is greater than zero, we want it to be even if P equals zero add an equal sign and then hit control s to save it and it reposts the sample program we can see that just that equal sign does what we want now we have a p0 in our sample code we'll come over here save the post processor and use that the next time we post out a fusion 360 so let's go ahead and tap the rest of these holes to see just how reliable this process is you can go through and manually select each of these holes, but that's no fun. Let's go ahead and create a containment sketch that covers the rest of the holes that we want to tap. So now we can jump back over to the manufacturer, use the same tapping cycle under the geometry tab, we will delete that selection, select one within our containment sketch, and then select same diameter, and then select the sketch we just created as a containment boundary. That way, it picks all of the holes within that sketch. Now, it's time to try out our freshly edited post processor. So we need to change which one we're using, post the program, and then here for our 1001 program, our G84 line contains a P0. Don't get psyched out when you hear editing post processors, folks. Visual Studio Code really breaks down that barrier to entry and makes it pretty simple. So now we're ready to let it go and tap the rest of these holes. So hopefully you learned something and hopefully this video helps you get the most out of your Tormach tapping head. Thank you guys for watching and take care. <laughs>